Well, first for concrete modeling, there are different data that must be set. Uh, first, uh, to, for the cracking and crossing behavior. So, well, first for cracking, uh, we have to input a cracking stress, and after that cracking stress, we can have a, a brittle uh, behavior that is suddenly uh, lost of the stiffness. We can add a softening modulus, and also we can add uh, through a table hardening and softening for modeling uh, fiber reinforced concrete. Also for compression, we have this type of parabolic loads with uh, that could follow nonlinear compressive isotropic hardening with a loading and loading curves or, or a bujicosuit plasticity. And also tracker bracket series failure can be added to the model. And well, cracking and crashing is analyzed in principal stresses. Uh, the sober civil frame, just starting a new analysis, uh, you, you have different options to generate the geometry, points, lines, volumes, volume operations, as any other cut. So it's easy to use. Also, you can copy, paste the different, different, uh, different copies. So it's very fast and easy. Also, you can import from any cut, so you can import it. This model, just for not to, to waste time, I've already generated the models, and but just uh, this is a volume. This volume will, will be messed with, uh, with solid elements for concrete. Also here, there are some lines. We will use these lines for boundary conditions on bottom and uh, to apply loads. So we will apply two vertical loads. It, it will be a simply supported beam. And um, well, we will generate uh, we will generate the model with solid elements for for concrete uh, link of truss elements for reinforcement. And we will change different uh, reinforcement configurations for analyzing different possible failure for compression. Uh, uh, for uh, cracking and tension of the reinforcement, shear, or different type, type of failures. So, well, the, the first, once we have the geometry, then for the modeling, this is a office style software, so, so we have to go from left to life, from left to right, following the different tabs, after generating the geometry or importing it, just model, first selecting elements. If we have for beams or trusses, uh, just the, the cross sections, concrete steel, generic, and then we mesh. For concrete, we select a concrete. In this case, it, it will be ACI called concrete, and we click here, this one. We will use it. Just clicking, we are selecting this material from the library. So all properties, all code properties are automatically defined here. For example, elasticity modulus, and they all are time-dependent properties. So well, in the model, we can solve for different agencies and civil firm automatically update all these properties. Well, for this type of, of model, I would like to solve with a nonlinear behavior. So, well, first, clicking here analysis, I will use for uh, tension analysis, I will solve short term load diagrams. So, clicking here, these diagrams is in the analysis diagram, short term loads, this is the table that is going to be used. As I said, it is time-dependent properties, so I have several days with several several stress-strain diagrams. When solving for different agencies, civil firm will take one of these and will uh, just change one for other if I'm solving the model for day 5, 10, 15 for evolutive st stage analysis. Also, well, uh, it could be done with Bujikosuit's plasticity model or isotropic plasticity model. I'm going to use isotropic plasticity models with loaded and loaded curves, follow the elasticity modulus and plasticity uh, deformation, which will be easy to plot those plasticity deformation. Well, that is for, for concrete, nonlinear, for compression, nonlinear behavior. Let's see for tension. For tension, the first option is setting cracking. If I set here cracking, I will have crack stress. Just if I see the slides, here this will be the crack stress I'm setting. It means this is the crack stress I set. When I will have elastic behavior on, for tension, when I get this crack stress, I could have a suddenly failure of the element. I will have the, the, a vertical load. Then I will have deformation without stresses. Or I can have a softening load or hardening and softening, depends if I'm modeling fibro reinforced concrete. In the model, just a softening modulus, zero, it will be vertical, I can add here a value, it's, it's, it's a softening value, depends on the on also the properties of concrete, or it could be variable. It's variable just a, with here in this table, an example, 
and later you will see uh, the different uh, charts that we have. We could have this this variable uh, softening modulus that it's, it's, it is in this case it's a straight line, but we can have different points. An example, I would add here. Um, the shear rotation factor can, can be variable as well. So well, I can have different softening loads, hardening, any type of table can be set. Also copy and paste from, from Excel table. So well, this will be the behavior for softening, the cracking behavior. Also a very important value is variable variable shear retention. Shear retention is is this this value is the, the coefficient that multi multiply the shear stiffness. So it means in a crack once the, the element has gone over the crack, the crack stress will have crack strain. Uh, in those elements, in those elements uh, after cracking, uh, the, CR st the CR stiffness uh, will be multiplied by this value. So in this case, I said 0 0.5, it will mean it will have half of the original CR stiffness before cracking. Well, it's a high value and this could be uh, good for models with small cracks and with a lot of reinforcement crossing the, crossing the, the crack, because it, this is about uh, the friction in the crack between both sides and also possible stones and other material crossing the cracks that join it and allows some, a part of a percent of the CR crossing the crack. But the most accurate is just defined through a table. In example, if I If I set this, I will have when crack with is zero, I will have 100% of stiffness. When crack is 0 0.001, no CR stiffness. This means that when in the model we will have a crack crossing the model, it will be, become a mechanism when the crack width is 0 0.001 and it stops converting and it collapses. So well, uh, these curves, you have many information in the internet. This used to have a parabolic shape something like this, so it could be something more similar to, so it should be something more similar to this. Okay, once I define all these properties, I generate the mesh, or I just also the, the materials for reinforcing steel that I'm going to use uh, ICI code, and uh, it's uh, just, I'm going to use uh, this one in example, and I click here the analysis and also I'm going to use a bilinear, um, bilinear anal uh, stress strain diagram, could be okay. And also here, uh, also just for the model, uh, any cross section, this is a circular section, I can add uh, here millimeters, for example, uh, 60 millimeters diameter for my bars, and well, just create the mesh. So well, for the mesh, first for the, for the solid elements, I'm going to create just uh, for, for the beam the concrete material, concrete material, click here, and then I create mesh controls. I'm going to extrude surface to have control in the section and in the extruding direction. As I need a very accuracy uh, model for crack developments and so on, I'm going to create a mesh like a, just an example, uh, this one with, with uh, two centimeters in the, in the section this element size and one centimeter or two centimeters an example in the length. So we'll just click in mesh. I generate the mesh of this, here you can see the progress meshing, I generate the mesh for this. In the same way, just I can generate enforcement. So what I'm going to add this, this enforcement for bottom reinforcement, an example, this one and this one. And just clicking here, I generate here you can see I've generated two trusses, that is reinforce one and reinforce two. And just the name reinforce two. And just also I miss I miss both. Well, once I have missed both, uh, do I just have to insert one into the other. You can see I don't have a congruent mesh. So I cannot merge the elements, the nodes, but I don't need. A very important tool in SilFEP is the insertion. If I click here, insertion, I am going to insert in this element, this model, 
uh, I'm going to insert the two other rebars, which is this one and the other one. So with this 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 tool, sorry, this one, with this tool, I insert reinforcement into concrete, and them all will work together. Yeah, you will couple the the grease of freedom of each uh, entities. So well, just uh, I will just I did all the examples following these these options, but I modify the the bending reinforcement diameter and the the, the different re uh, reinforcement configuration, and apply a load two loads on, on top at a distance of of, uh, of half meter from supports. It has one point five meters span length, and just uh, just apply loads with different reinforcement configuration, analyze the possible. Also very important, uh, I just said for compression, I will have a parabolic load, will load it and unload it. But if I would like to have a brittle compression uh, uh, behavior that is crashing, I have to set here crashing and analyze the strain for crashing. Codes limit strain for concrete, compression concrete to 0.35 or 0.3%. So in this way, I will have also crashing, crashing, crashing failure. So well, we have completely define it all non-linearity. The first model under reinforcement beam, what I have is here on bottom two uh, bars of, that is uh, 200 square millimeters, that's a CR reinforcement to avoid CR failure and apply two loads. Once I apply loads, I increase that load still failure and I analyze the failure that happens. Also, this, these examples are compared with real, uh, real test. This real, you can find this real test in the Structure Pro, and here they have in videos, they have analyzed, here this, this, in these videos they have, uh, just, uh, have, they have different tests where they apply loads till, till they, they break those beams and get the relationship between loads and vertical uh, deflection. So uh, we follow the same examples and compare real test results with civil front results. Uh, you can find these videos in the Structure Pro uh, at YouTube model we had here this is the the load we added so here you can see for simply supported 1.5 meters uh, span 20 20 centimeters at both sizes uh, loads on on two points at half meter just half meter from every support so half meter to first load half meter to the other and half meter and we apply load till till collapse Till the model collapse uh, means not converting because uh, the, the, six, the model breaks and not converting. So well, it, the, it has been solved in 25 steps. And well, if we plot in one of these points a vertical displacement verti uh, versus the load, we get this type of curve. We can see in this case we have like a ductile behavior. First step here we have like a uh, modification so it could be means cracking starts but mainly elastic behavior and then we have like here a horizontal branch a maximum load that we, we can applaud is between 35 and 40 kilonewtons and this behavior so well let's see what's happening in the model for these points for the last one so just going to the last the last load step that we'll solve I'm going to plot first Okay, here in the model, I'm going to plot maximum principal crack and plot it. Okay, I can see I have mainly bending cracks in the center. Just as I have here high white with uh, cracks, just to be able to see the rest, I'm going to reduce a little bit the range. So just one and plot here. Well, I can see I have mainly bending cracks and no um, just not high CR cracks. So I can imagine this is mainly having bending failure. So what if I hide the, um, the, concrete. the concrete part, yes, and plot the reinforcement bars. So let's see if jailing is happening. As I saw here, I have two bars of 16 millimeters. So I'm going to plot the equivalent plastic strain, for example. I can see I have high yielding values where the crack were, were generated and only for bending but no yielding for compression reinforcement and for these parts. Okay, so what results quite good and just what we expected. 
I'm also I'm going to plot the crossing the crossing zone. As I said, I'm using uh, isotropic plastic plastic modeling, so uh, compression uh, the, the formation is analyzed by equivalent plastic strain. Here in my material, you saw that I have limit crossing to 0.0035%. So it means when it reaches 0 0.35, 0.0035, there's a failure. So I can see in this model, I have at the end, at the end, a compression failure crossing in this zone. But I also have yelling and cracking high cracks here. So well, I can see I start having cracking. Let's plot this this point so i can see i have first crackings low compression strain very low but crackings and still yielding and then the final step is just high cracks still yielding and final we have compression failure at the end here this is the the test that were done and you can see here you have at this horizontal branch which is between 35 and 40 close to zero results High cracks start mainly in the center and vertical, so they are not, not high uh, shear cracks, so it's mainly bending. And then when we have this suddenly collapse, you can see here also a piece of concrete is broken due to compression. So what we have first cracks, yelling and reinforcement, and under reinforced. It means it is yelling and getting high, high values. So well, if we compare values, we have crack patterns that are very similar, vertical, mainly in the center, vertical and not much here, and also crossing zones in the center, similar to the ones we get. Here we have a video. In this video, you will see a point moving here, that it means the test, the real test, load versus deflection. And here we will have the same, the same model, but in single frame. Cracks starts, vertical cracks, as here, then they are increased a lot, the horizontal branch, and then suddenly collapse due to compression. So if we compare both cool curves, we can see they start at between about 36, 37, similar to civil film. Civil film, this curve is more horizontal. That is because the well, yielding, uh, yielding steel, the, the, we have a horizontal branch. There is no hardening for steel. The real behavior of steel is, has a hardening, so this curve as a hardening that we didn't add, and due to that uh, not hardening, we have a more uh, suddenly behavior earlier due to, comp to compression in concrete. So well, the accuracy of steel film you can see is very, very high. So we have finished this interesting video example. Uh, if you have uh, more questions, always stay tuned to the virtual classroom, to forums, and you can contact us by email as well. Thank you very much. See you in the free course.